Hey everyone, welcome to the February Fragrance Awards. During this series of videos, I share with you all of the fragrances, well, not all, a lot of the fragrances that I wore over the past 30 days and my impressions of them according to some faux categories that I put together a while back and have been doing these videos for quite a while. There's a playlist that is linked in the description box if you'd like to see the others in the series. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in with the first category. The first is the best for the season. So we are in February. It's supposed to be winter here in central Virginia, but the weather here is very fickle and it changes its mind. Some years we get big snowstorms and it's cold. I mean, like bitterly cold in January and February and even into early March. And then other years like this year, it warms up quickly and flowers begin to bloom. The frogs begin to croak do frogs croak what do, what kind of noise do they ribbit frogs ribbit all of that stuff starts to happen and then we get like another frost in march anyway it hasn't been the coldest february but we did have a few chilly days i am picking for this category of fragrance that i fell in love with when i sampled it in the fall it is called coconut milk chai this is not the bottle for it and i'll explain in just a minute and this is made by organic perfume girl so i came across organic perfume girl on etsy ordered some samples really enjoyed this one i have a cafe au lait that's those little tiny bottles if you've been watching this series little tiny bottle that i ordered of cafe au lait and this sample came and a few other samples and i found her perfumery to be really different interesting and unique so this bottle here is off of amazon the bottle itself but the fluid is a combination of the biggest bottle I think she sells of this, or maybe she sells something bigger. But I purchased, I think it was a one ounce and then a few of the smaller um, 0.3 ounce bottles, if I remember correctly. I don't remember the details, but a bunch of little bottles that I then put into this one. So what does this fragrance smell like? It's called coconut milk chai, and that is exactly what I get. I, I personally get a very beautiful, pronounced, creamy coconut. I get a pronounced chai spice. This is a spicy fragrance. And I find it to be warm, comforting, enveloping, and I really enjoy sniffing it both from the atomizer and spraying it on myself. So I'm thrilled to have this. I do wanna warn you that at least one viewer tried this out and didn't enjoy it at all. On her, she thought it, came across a little bit. I think she mentioned like in the BO direction. So I just wanna share that with you. I don't get that experience. I find this to be a really lovely, cozy, gourmand leaning fragrance. However, uh, I always like to share different points of view because as we know, perfume is a different experience person to person. But this is a huge win for me. If you like different and interesting scents, I think she has one called Clove Cigarette. She has one called Mama Was an Opium Smoker and a few others that I just find really interesting to sniff. So that's Organic Perfume Girl and this is Coconut Milk Chai, a recent huge favorite of mine. And then in the category of best every day, I actually have two that I'd love to feature and I've talked about these before. So they're not new to my fragrance scene. This one has been a long standing fragrance in my collection. It, this one is from Clean and it's specifically the Clean Reserve line. I've had the original that come in the little square bottles and this is called Skin, Skin. The only thing I would say about this fragrance that's a negative is that it's, it, and maybe it's a positive, it depends on how you look at it, is it's really soft and close to the skin. And I would say it's kind of like a half day fragrance. You have to reapply after, you know, four-ish hours if you want to continue to smell it because it gets really, really soft. I will say I find that to be the case with most of the clean reserve fragrances. They're more on the subtle side. These are not fragrances that you wear when you want to be noticed. Quite the opposite. They're very sort of intimate scents. So this is a fragrance that I try trust wholeheartedly in work situations. It's one that I would wear if I'm in close quarters with colleagues around a conference table, in a meeting, if I had to be in elevators, if I had to be in any sort of crowded spaces, it doesn't betray you and play you. It doesn't get too strong, overwhelming on the skin or anything like that. It's called skin for a reason, a very subtle musky smell. There's a bit of saltiness to this and there's a touch of a touch of like an animalic note way, way, way deep in the background, not something that is pronounced or that people would even pick up. By and large, this is a musk that smells like clean skin um, that has warmed up after a shower. So like an hour or two after a shower, what skin might smell like. 
So when you look at the notes on this, there's supposed to be a praline note. I don't necessarily get that, but there is a hint of sweetness, if you will, and maybe that's coming from the praline or something else that emerges from this fragrance on the skin. It's just like the most subtle sweetness. But again, if you think of skin scent as being both at the same time, a little bit salty and a little tiny bit sweet from whatever someone is excreting from their skin, if you will, that's a little bit of what you get from this. I find it to be really pretty, non-offensive, great for lots of different kinds of occasions. I'll also feature Pure DKNY. There's a series of these, and I'm not sure if they're still for sale or discontinued. You can get them at the cosmetics company store, and certainly they are available on online discounters. This is another fragrance that feels musky, although it's actually in the woody direction. It reads musky to me, even though I don't think that there's a musk note in here. It's woody, there's a beautiful sandalwood and a soft, a soft, delicate touch of floral. I wouldn't call this a floral fragrance. I would say that the florals in here round this out and give it a, a softness. That's the only way I can think of to describe it right now. Primarily sandalwood, it has a lightness and an airiness about it. However, it's anchored by that sandalwood note that makes it a little bit on the earthy side. So it's the same, right? It represents like earthiness and a little bit of airiness at the same time, meshes beautifully with the skin and warms up nicely uh, and is an easy reach for running errands, jeans, t-shirt kind of day, hanging around the house when you just want to smell fresh and clean and a little touch of femininity, but you like that woodsiness too. The next category is the best special occasion fragrance. This could also go in the biggest surprise category, which is coming in a few. Choco Violette from Mancera, which is one that I had heard a few people rave about and got really curious about it. I liked the description of it, purchased it, sniffed it, liked it, didn't think I loved it, wasn't sure if it would stick around for like an eternity, but I definitely wanted to try it some more. And boy, am I glad that I did. So I applied this on a relatively cool, dry day. I was hanging around doing this, that, and the other, running errands. Who knows what I was doing? I just remember it was one of those sort of days where I was, I was not working and I was just running around doing stuff. And I remember sitting down in a rocking chair off screen here and going, something smells good. What is that? It was me. And it was this. And I was thinking, ooh, I almost, almost, almost thought about, I didn't actually do it, but I thought about giving up on this fragrance. And I'm so glad that I didn't. It's one that if you sniff from the atomizer and you have an adventurous spirit, you're going to think that's interesting and different. You're not maybe going to be in love with it, but let me tell you, and y'all know how Mancera's perform. A few sprays of this for most Mancera's, not all, it's going to take you through the day, maybe into the night, maybe into next week and next month, <laughs> next month. This one here, it was giving me beautiful wafts of a very sophisticated otherworldly scent that I would not have described this as just sort of sniffing it from the atomizer or spraying on a piece of paper or even the few times that I tried it on skin. And by the way, I've worn this before like through the night, but there was something about wearing this that day that just really gave me a new appreciation for this fragrance. And I couldn't help but think this would be a magnificent scent for a special occasion. It could be your date night. I don't know that it's necessarily the sexiest fragrance, but it's definitely a really distinguished, regal kind of a smell, if you ask me. So it's chocolate, a really dry chocolate, like chocolate powder almost. You're not going to get like that really creamy, milky chocolate scent. No, this is like a dry chocolate. It also has a prominent hazelnut note. So do I pick it up as hazelnut in particular? Not necessarily, just a nutty accord, as well as a violet note. Obviously it's called Choco Violet and Violet gives a really sort of cold, austere sense to a fragrance, a very like librarian with her hair up in a bun kind of a feel and also vanilla. I found this to be just magnificent, absolutely great for special occasion. And I'm glad that I didn't think about moving it along or putting it to the side and actually gave it an, another chance. I say that like I didn't like it and I don't mean it that way. I just meant that when I first tried it, I thought that's okay. It's nice. It's nice. Not a love, but Hey, you can change your mind on things. And that's what I love. And you're going to hear about a change of mind in one to come that shocked even me. Let's keep going. So speaking of Mancera's and Mancera's that I just wasn't sure if I was going to keep in my collection, 
And I'm still unsure of this, but I'm leaning towards yes. In the category of sexiest is none other than Wild Python. So if you're familiar with the show Married with Children, and if you're an 80s kid, you definitely know that show. And you think about Peggy Bundy. Love that character. The, she made the show, in my opinion. This bottle, the tackiness of this reminds me of her. Like she's beautiful and tacky at the same time. That's what I think of this crazy looking <laughs> bottle. So I don't think that the bottle tells you what the fragrance is like. When I think about like a wild python fragrance, I'm thinking of something that's leathery and animalic. This is a really beautiful feminine fragrance. It's primarily tuberose, but it has like this marshmallow fluffiness cloud-like aspect from Osmanthus and, and there's a peach note as well that gives it a little bit of fruitiness along with the tuberose, but primarily this is a tuberose fragrance. And I have it in the sexiest category because when I wore this, my husband was like all over me. What are you wearing? It smells so good. Come over here. Let me sniff your neck. I don't know what it is about tuberose as a flower. And I know a lot of y'all out there can't stand tuberose, but let me tell you what, it, my tuberose fragrances are the ones that get me the most compliments and the most attention from the male world. So, and I've been wearing tuberose fragrances for years. They just love them. They love them. So this is a win in terms of being a sexy fragrance. Great for being in like your highest feminine self where you're commanding the room and you're capturing attention and you're bringing the boys to the yard kind of a thing. Do we still say that? I don't know how we feel about that phrase, but it cracks me up. Let's go on. So the next category is the biggest surprise. So Chaco Violet could have been that one. However, there was an even bigger surprise this month. Shocked me actually, like beyond surprise and into shocking territory. Vanilla Milk by Ellis Brooklyn. So if you follow me on Instagram, by the way, I'm Essential Veronica on Instagram, Essential Veronica. Join me over there. We have a lot of fun over there. This fragrance, I posted a reel about. When I first purchased this, I just wasn't sure how I felt about it. It had this really strange opening that was, I called it like gaseous. <laughs> Smelled like some sort of strange gas to me. Not quite gasoline, but that's the best way to describe it. Like the fumes that come off of a gas station, something in that neighborhood. But I'm going to tell you what, I've worn this probably three times since I purchased it and then wore it again to sleep. You can see I'm putting a little bit of a dent in it. I know for those of you that are newer to fragrances, you're like, what dent? But look, with a collection like that, that's, that's a dent. So this fragrance, I wore to bed one night. And I've had this experience with several fragrances where I douse myself in it, get in the bed, I'm all cozy. And then I wake up to tinkle, TMI, sorry, come back and the bed just smells amazing. <laughs> so I will say that that happened with this. And I will also say that as I put it on and went to bed, I thought I actually smell much better than I thought I was going to smell with this fragrance. So before it was like a meh in the meh category and I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it but I have completely changed my mind and I really, really am enjoying this now. I don't know if it just needed to sit. I don't know if I needed to get used to it. I don't know if I'm experiencing it differently. I have no idea what happened. All I can tell you is that this fragrance at this point smells really good and it is giving me a beautiful vanilla milk scent minus that gas opening type of thing. So if you think about the way that Briar's ice cream the straight up vanilla bean kind of ice cream smells as it melts and heats up. That smell is what this smells like to me. And I'm really enjoying it, like it. So I don't know that I would have this as a heavy rotation daytime kind of scent, but definitely a cozy hang around the house evening, you know, wear to bed kind of fragrance. It has really surprised me. In the category of best bottle is one that I purchased full price. We already know how I feel about full price. I do it very rarely, but this was a birthday present to myself and I got to pick out some of the features of it and it's Angelique Noir from Guerlain. And so I picked out the hammered gold top. That's one of the features that you get to pick out what you want it to look like up there. The gold ribbon. I think you can pick out the color even of this little thing. I think you can get it engraved. I did not choose to do that. And then it has the little B imprint on the back there. Are you familiar with Angelique Noir? I've talked about a dupe that I have of it called Aurora from Stargaze Fragrances, which I love and I still have that. I'm not letting go of that. That's one that I'm sucking the juice down <laughs> on slowly. This fragrance, if you're familiar with Angelica, 
it's a little bit on the green side, almost like if hay, think about how hay smells. And if hay were green, that gives me the sense of what Angelica smells like. And vanilla is mostly what you get here. It's a little bit of a drier vanilla. It's not juicy. It's not gourmand. It's not rich. It's a green dry vanilla. And I think it's particularly beautiful and elegant. So in the category of worst bottle, I'm really irritated with this fragrance because it smells so fabulous, but it needs a much more regal bottle. Ombre Vanille by Laura Mercier. So as you can see, I've used this a bit. I adore this fragrance. It smells to me like in New York, if you have been to New York City or grew up in any of the boroughs and you knew, you know what a coquito is, the little coquito man would come around with his cart and he had these huge sort of uh, buckets of ices. They were like, it's like an icy not quite an ice cream and it's not quite like a shaved ice it's like some combination of both and the coconut flavored one is what this reminds me of what it smells like to me i think this is so 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 good <laughs> the fragrance itself doesn't last super long you'll get a few hours out of it but it is an absolutely fabulous vanilla coconut smell but my problem is there's nothing wrong with the bottle but the fragrance is so amazing that the bottle sort of betrays it this needs a much more regal type of bottle. It really does. It's so, so good. So then in the category of favorite blind buy, here's a fragrance that has stood the test of time for me. I loved it when I first got it and I still love it. And every time I try it again, I fall in love with it again. It is Dolce Gabbana, the only one in tents. I'm surprised I haven't gone through this bottle yet only because I'm always trying new fragrances. Otherwise, this would be one that I would pull for quite often. I call it like a beautiful tropical resort style fragrance. It has, in my opinion, an enormously intoxicating combination of coconut, a beautiful creamy coconut, a luscious, deep, delightful vanilla. It has jasmine, orange blossom. There's a green apple note way in the background, but what I really get from this is a combination of luscious, juicy white florals <laughs> and a creamy, gorgeous, coconutty vanilla or vanilla e coconut, however you want to think about that. And I just think it's beautiful. Another one that my husband loves on me, one that I absolutely enjoy wearing and will be in my collection. And when I'm done with this, I'm going to buy the bigger one, period, end of story. In the category of not a safe blind buy. Queer Elang from Ely Saab. This is a potent, potent, overpowering fragrance not to be sprayed heavily. So it is exactly what the title says. It's leather and it's Elang Elang and you get some smoky, incense -y types of notes in here. It is not to be worn in weather that isn't absolutely cold, like dead of winter. I mean, you can wear this... <laughs> <laughs> you can wear this in another time, but I'm going to tell y'all, it'll perform the best, shine the best in cold weather and will probably be suffocating in other weather. This is worth hunting down if you like leather fragrances, if you like to smell different, and if you like a challenging fragrance. It is challenging, but I also find it to be particularly, particularly beautifully unique, uniquely beautiful. I find it to be a little bit intoxicating and can't stop sniffing myself when I have this on. I think a lot of people would think that this is wretched. Like they would just think it just stinks. I don't. I think it's quite beautiful. Not a safe blind buy, but definitely one of the treasured fragrances in my collection for its level of uniqueness. Then in the overhyped category, hold your comments. <laughs> I know some of y'all really love this. And I think it's quite nice too, but I think it's a little overhyped and it's Kayali Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper. I know, hold your tomatoes, hold them. No, this is, <laughs> it's really nice. It's, it's, it reminds me a lot of Oud Satin Mood as I sniff this. And I forget what else it reminded me of, but it gives me like, a, imagine Atomic Rose, imagine Delina Exclusive. Yeah, imagine all your rose and powdery fragrances kind of all wrapped into one. Here you go. And in that sense, this fragrance doesn't feel particularly unique to me. Not that a fragrance has to be, but for the hype that this has gotten and the way that people are literally like jumping off of cliffs with joy <laughs> about this fragrance. 
sorry. I just don't quite understand that, but it is nice. It definitely has incredible projection and is long lasting. And I have to say my husband doesn't enjoy this. So that's kind of a bummer for me. If he had enjoyed it, I might've invested a little bit more in this, but I have the Oud Satin Mood. I have a dupe of that. That is really fantastic and scratches this itch. So I guess my point is that this isn't a unique scent profile for the hype that it gets, but it is quite nice. So take that for what it's worth. And then in the category of hidden gem, one that will be talked about again this spring because it's worthy of that. And that's Cartier's Beza Volet. Might have said that wrong. Maybe it's Beza. <laughs> but if you like fragrances that smell like a garden, here you go. This is that beautiful wet garden smell. It's lily on top of lily on top of green notes on top of green notes. And it's just quite delightful and a hidden gem that people don't talk about. You have to be a floral lover and you have to enjoy greenness. And I'm not talking about cut grass greenness. I'm talking about a greenness that you might get when you walk into a greenhouse. You know how it's moist in there, that there's heat from sunlight coming through all of the windows and the greenness combined with the floral aspects of whatever's living in there kind of combine in the air. So it's earthy and it's pretty. And yeah, I just, yeah, let me just leave it at that. If you're into that sort of thing, check this one out. Normally at this point, I do a bottom, middle and top three fragrances. I have to be honest, I had a really fantastic fragrance month and smelled pretty darn good from day to day. So I don't even wanna play my perfumes. <laughs> I'm talking about y'all by forcing three into the bottom. There is one that I will share as the bottom one. And then I'm gonna compensate and have a middle five. So two of the bottom slots go into the middle category. And the bottom one I no longer have, it has gone to a happy new home. It's from Tokyo Milk and it's called Bulletproof. This is a fragrance that could, it could have been so beautiful. That song, who sings that? Could have been so beautiful. That's not how that goes. That song, Tiffany, somebody. Anyhow, this fragrance, when I first purchased it and sprayed it on, I thought this, this is the one. I have arrived to perfume heaven. <laughs> Coconut, tea, and an ebony wood. The combination of those three in the opening of this fragrance is absolutely divine, like mind blowing divine. My issue is that goes away really quickly and you're left then with this sort of lackluster woodiness. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the dry down, but it's the opening of this fragrance. This is that fragrance that's like that first date that is just amazing. You have the best time of your life. You go home at the end of the night and you just know, I'm gonna marry this one, this is the one. And you go on the second date and you wondered what the first date was all about because he's just incredibly dull, boring, and lackluster. <laughs> That's kind of what I experienced with this. And I'm really sad. I love the bottle. I think the bottle's super cute. That opening, if there's a way to prolong that is just, could be my signature scent. It's super divine. But alas, it was not meant to be and it's in a new home. I hope that person loves it. And if you out there in the audience purchased it, let me know your thoughts. I'd be curious to know if it was everything for you that I hoped it would be for me. So then on to the middle five, I'm going to start off with the beautiful Narciso Rouge. I mean, what a bottle. So a strange thing happened with this fragrance. When I tried it recently, I felt like I was having trouble really appreciating the scent. Like I wasn't getting a lot of it. And that'll happen from day to day. Like one day I'll smell something really profoundly. And then the next day, or maybe a week later or whatever, I spray it and it just doesn't have the same potency. So I don't know what happened on the day that I wore this in February, but other people around me smelled it just fine. And no, I don't have COVID. It was just like a one day weird off thing. I don't know if I was having hormone issues or what the hell was going on. But anyway, this fragrance my husband loved. I said, you know, I'm having trouble smelling this to you. And he smelled it just fine. I smelled it some, it just wasn't as strong as I remember, but he smelled it just fine. And he's usually the one that has trouble picking up fragrances on me. Like something has to be fairly potent for him to smell it. What do you get here? A nice powdery, musky iris scent softened by some other florals and other notes. I think this is a beautiful feminine fragrance. And today even I'm smelling it a lot more from the atomizer than I did on the day that I wore it. Beautiful. And I really enjoy the bottle too. I think this is one of those elegant, sophisticated scents. It could be someone's signature scent. Now it does have uh, a little bit of the original white cube kind of musk in it, that musky powderiness. 
but it's softened here by the iris versus that one that has a completely different floral note structure. So anyway, beautiful, except it's in the middle because the day that I wore it, I don't know what happened. I couldn't smell it that much. Also in the middle category, only because of its longevity issues, because this one is, I adore it. I adore it. Like, okay. Yeah. Lost Cherry from Tom Ford. Love the bottle. It was one that of the Tom Fords that I fell in love with right away. This is a unique scent. And of course it's been duped a lot since then. There's now a surge of cherry fragrances on the market, but this one continues to capture my heart. It's really special and really unique. It just doesn't last long. The initial blast of it is intoxicating cherry with almond and a liquor type of smell. And then it calms down a little bit into a softer cherry, uh, still with the almond and the liquor maybe dies down a little bit, but I, I adore this. I just wished it had a lot more lasting power, but it's staying in the collection. Another in the middle category and for the same reasons as the Tom Ford, it is La Nuit Trésor Nude. Love this bottle. This could have easily been my favorite bottle. The fragrance is coconut and vanilla and a soft, subtle rose. It's very much what I call like a ballet slipper kind of fragrance because it's just light and airy and pretty and very very girly very very feminine very girly very sort of a delicate smell and i adore it i have to douse myself in it because it doesn't last very long you get a few hours out of this well let me not say that it has decent longevity like into the six hour period but in terms of having lots of presence on your skin it gets softer quickly like within a few hours so that's it but what a pretty bottle and what a fantastic fragrance then a recent addition to my collection as of this winter that I am absolutely enjoying, and it is Fire at Will from Devoy. So again, it's in the middle category because the lasting power is less than I would like. However, however, this is another one that I wore to bed and smelled on myself in the morning. So I don't know if I just go nose blind to it. It definitely settles down, of course, but I did have remnants of this, if you will, on my skin in the morning. This is a really sweet, very girly, very almost cotton candy-esque sugary uh, vanilla fragrance, but heavy, heavy on the sweetness, very cloud-like and airy. This is a little bit of like, if you've tried Vanille from Outremer, Outremer, that's sold in Anthropology, that vanilla fragrance, it's very nice. This is almost like a little bit of an older sister to that with a little bit more depth that I think that that one lacks. I like that one too, but this one is more on the grown up side, if you will, but still playful and girly and fun and flirty. And I just, I like these nice hefty bottles that Javoy makes. So then for the top three category, I'll start off with one that has been a mainstay in my collection and made my original top 10 video back in 2020. Some others have bumped it out of place, but I'm still enjoying this. And this is my second bottle and it's Cannabis Santal from Fresh. I ordered this from Sephora and I think Fresh has their own website too. And I call this my superhero villainous ish kind of fragrance both at once you can be a superhero or you can be a villain in your black leather suit there's not leather in this but it gives me that kind of eartha kit kind of feeling i have heard that this fragrance is discontinued and i hope that's not the case because it really is a stunning fragrance it's primarily you definitely get like a cannabis note but very subdued it's it doesn't have like the skankiness of a cannabis note it's almost like a clean green cannabis and patchouli and a little bit of florals and chocolate. There's a chocolate note in here. I find this to be a mysterious and alluring fragrance that I really enjoy wearing. I feel like I'm upping my game when I put this one on. It has really decent longevity throughout the day. So if you're interested in something like this, see if you can grab it. If it has been discontinued, it's gonna be really difficult to find, but I find this to be one of my more unique, interesting, notable fragrances. Another top fragrance for the month is Iris or Iris Drage from Maison Lancome. Another really difficult to find fragrance, a beautiful Iris fragrance. One of the reasons that I don't really need to purchase many other Iris fragrances, I now have Apollonia from Zerjoff and Iris Shot from Olfactive Studios and a couple of other Iris fragrances, N Narciso Rouge, which I just mentioned. And so my Iris itch is scratched. <laughs> I have plenty of beautiful Iris fragrances. And this one is one of the reasons I don't need to look anymore. It's a powdery, but also almondy iris. 
with vanilla in it. So it's sweet and it's structural and it's linear. And at the same time, it has no structure at all. Like it's structural, but it also has really soft edges. Like it's a, a pillow of a fragrance. I think this is really beautiful. It's one that grew on me when I first purchased it. I wasn't quite sure what I felt about it. And the more that I wore it, the more I let it uh, warm up on my skin, the more I enjoy this. You definitely have to be in the mood to wear this. This is one of those fragrances that transports you somewhere else. The scene that comes to mind when I put this on is, gosh, I forget the name of the movie. Uh, if I find it, I'll put it up here. But it's Nicole Kidman and she, either she or her husband oh, he's a ghost. He doesn't, or she's a ghost. Somebody's a ghost in the movie, y'all. And they're moving through a misty forest. Gosh, if I find the scene, I'll put it up here. And so the air is wet and it's powdery looking at the same time. And it's thick and it's foggy and you can't really see in front of you. And there's like a ghost or a person or something. It reminds me of that. I really enjoy this very unique fragrance. And then I'll close out with Santal Vini from Seven Virtues. I had a number of sandalwood fragrances this month, including Santal Blush. I can't include everything in these videos, but Sandalwood had a really big moment this month. This is a fabulous fragrance uh, available at Sephora and I don't, know, I don't know where else. Let me know where else you can find it, but I got it off of Sephora. Excellent spicy sandalwood fragrance that has a little bit of sweetness and softness from vanilla, but by and large, a sandalwood note supported by those others. And it's long lasting, it's strong. It's one of the nicest sandalwoods that I have in my collection, next to maybe like Santal Wood and Santal Blush from Tom Ford, Santal Wood from Theodorus Calatinus. Amazing fragrance. This uh, is a top contender along with those. It holds its own. So you all, that was my February fragrance awards show. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What was your favorite fragrance of February that you wore? And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, friends.